behold the mysterious floating orb. <laughs> ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Soup's on. Do you know what comes to many people's mind when they hear the word Islam? This is what comes to their mind. Violence, terrorism, oppressing women, craziness, and sometimes they talk about Muslims as if we are bloodthirsty. But this is not Islam. In fact, if we look at the biggest wars and terrorist acts, they were caused by non-Muslims. Who caused the first and second world wars? Who bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki and killed more than 250,000 human beings? Who invaded Iraq and killed more than 500,000 Iraqis during the Iraq war? Who has been killing the Palestinians every day since 1948? So, no religion should be judged by a selective view who associate themselves with a particular faith. The religion should be judged by its teachings, not by its people. I mean, I won't judge Christianity by the action of the Spanish Inquisition, or the action of George Bush. Or Andres Berveik, the Norwegian terrorist who did a bombing in Oslo which killed 77 people, and then this terrorist act was linked to Muslims, then they realized that he is an extreme Christian and anti-Islam. So, I would rather judge Christianity by its teachings. But the Islamic teachings in your book say to kill non-Muslims. Have you read these verses through the Quran yourself? No. That's why you are claiming this. A lot of the Islam haters on TV or the websites take the verses out of context to serve the meaning that they want. The verses you are talking about were revealed in state of war where the Muslims were defending themselves and also to fight those who kicked them out of their houses. Even in the state of war, Allah commanded Muslims to not transgress. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا that's what your media won't show you. They ignore the fundamental teachings of Islam that emphasize acting justly to human beings, no matter who they are. Once a funeral passed by the Prophet Muhammad, then he stood up as a sign of respect. One of the companions said to him, It's a Jewish funeral. Then the Prophet Muhammad said, was he not a human being? They ignore the Quranic teachings that say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu koonu qawwameena lillahi shuhadaa bil qisd wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala an la ta'dilu i'dilu huwa aqrabu lit taqwa And also they ignore the Prophet Muhammad teachings that emphasize to take care of the others. The Prophet Muhammad said, None of you is a believer if he eats his full while his neighbor is hungry. That shows that we must take care of the others. And we will not be true believers if we just care about ourselves and forget the others. What about oppressing women? I'll make a new video about this topic. But let me tell you something. As we know, Islam is the fastest growing religion. The amazing fact, most of those who convert are women. So, who should I believe? Okay. Now tell me about Muhammad. Why did he invent Islam? I made a video about the Prophet Muhammad. Please check it out when you're done watching this video. Well, many people think that Islam is a new religion that has been brought by the Prophet Muhammad. And this is not correct. Islam is the religion of all the prophets and messengers. Adam, Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. No one can be Muslim if he rejects to believe in any of them as a messengers of God. All of them are Muslims. And their message was calling people to submit and surrender to the one God without any partner or children. Wait a minute, are you saying that Jesus was a Muslim? Yeah, as I just said, Islam is not a new religion that has been brought by the Prophet Muhammad. The word Islam is an Arabic word which means peace, submission, obedience and surrender to the one God. If you mix these words together, you would get the word Islam. And you can find that in the Bible, it speaks of the prophets that calling people to submit and surrender to the one God, which is the concept of Islam. But the God of the Bible is not your God, Allah. No, no, no. We both believe in the same God. Allah is the creator. Allah is the name of God in Arabic. Even the Arab Christians say, Christ is the son of Allah. And we as a Muslims believe in the gospel, Torah, and Psalms, but we believe that they have been distorted. But the word Islam does not exist in the Bible. But the concept of Islam exists in the Bible. 
and the word Islam exists in the Quran. What is Quran? Quran is our book, the word of God, the final revelation. Just as there is an Old Testament and a New Testament, the Quran is the last testament. Come on, your book was written by Muhammad. Have you ever read the Quran from cover to cover? No, no, no. So, I don't know how you claim that it was written by the Prophet Muhammad. Anyway, let's say that it was written by the Prophet Muhammad. Would you believe me if I said that there are verses that threaten the Prophet Muhammad? It could be written by inspiration of the devil. How could it be written by inspiration of the devil while the Quran warns us to not follow the devil and tells us that he is the enemy? If you don't have enough information about Islam, you would expect the Prophet Muhammad's name would be mentioned more than the others. But guess what? Moses was mentioned 136 times, Jesus was mentioned 25 times, Abraham was mentioned 69 times, Noah was mentioned 43 times, while Muhammad's name was only mentioned 4 times in the Quran. You will not find the Prophet Muhammad's compassion and emotional difficulties that he experienced through his life. His wife Kharija, who loved him so much, and his wife Aisha, the most beloved person to him, were never mentioned in the Quran. But guess which woman was mentioned in the Quran? The mother of Jesus. The Virgin Mary, or as we say, Maryam. Her name was mentioned 34 times, and there's a whole chapter called Maryam. If the Prophet Muhammad was the author of the Quran, why didn't he name some chapters with his mother, wives, or daughter's name instead of Mary? If you look at some of the non-Muslim scriptures, we would be shocked to see man's messages were written into holy book, but we don't have that in Islam. Islam is not a just a religion, it's a way of life. It's a complete and perfect system of actions that makes the person and the society as a whole better and solves the issues that the community faces. Economic crisis, for example. The way to solve economic crisis is changing the banking system to the Islamic banking. And this way function under the Islamic financial system because it doesn't deal with money lending. When I was in England, I was surprised that many banks offer Islamic accounts. You can google the Islamic banking and read more about it. The other issue is poverty. Islam has the solution for poverty. How? One of the pillars of Islam is... And it's another classic Yankees Red Sox game tonight. Oh, this is so intense. My hands are actually sweating. I have to go to the bathroom so badly, I'm doing irreparable damage to my kidneys right now. Well, just go. I'll pause the game. And what if the Yankees lose? It would be because I somehow jinxed it. I promise you. I will never go to the bathroom again. I get it. Now, you do know that when the Red Sox win, I'll be haunting your dreams for the next six months, right? And you understand that when the Yankees win, I will use my connections at the State Department to have that wife of yours deported. Well, then I'm going to tell your brothers where you live. Yeah. No. What? Oh, come on! I'm so sorry. Hi, science will set you free. I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God because there is no evidence of his existence. I know why you believe in God. You believe in God because you don't know how things were formed. When you see anything, you say, oh, God made that. That shows how short-sighted and ignorant you are. You attribute it to God because you don't want to find any other explanation for its existence. You believe in God due to your ignorance. And if there is a God, then who created this God? Well, I really respect you, but I don't agree with what you have said. Do I believe in God because I don't know any other explanation for creation than I attribute it to God? Actually, no. I base my belief in God on knowledge. How? When you see something such as camera, oh, come on, this is an old argument. Please let me continue answering you, then you can say what you want. Okay. When you see something such as camera, do you say that camera was designed by someone or was it through a very slow process? 
Common sense says it was designed by someone. I can't say you are lazy if you would say it was designed by someone because you don't want to think or use your mind. There can't be there any other explanation except it was designed by someone. That's what I'm talking about. You base what you know on knowledge. According to life experience and common sense, order doesn't spontaneously arise from chaos. The more complex an order the system, the more functional the form, the greater level of intelligence behind it. You agree with me, don't you? Yeah, I agree. When we look at any camera, we know it contains plastic, glass, etc. And we know it all comes from sand and oil. If you found this camera in the desert, can you say this camera came from billion of years of random events? No. Why? As we agreed, order doesn't spontaneously arise from chaos. Good. So what about the origin of the first cell? It's by very slow process. Okay, now let's see if random events or a very slow process could produce one cell or even one protein. Protein consists of amino acids and there are more than 250 varieties of amino acids in natural. Only 20 are found in the living organisms. The selected amino acids in protein must be left-handed, not right-handed. After the proper amino acids have been selected in the correct amounts, they need to be arranged in a particular sequence for protein to be formed. After arranging in the correct sequence, the selected amino acids must be joined together with a peptide bond. If the process I just told you about doesn't occur, then amino acids won't form a protein. I'll try to make it simple for you to understand by giving you an example. Let's say we have 20 blind men, each with a deck of blind cards. And what we want are 200 blind cards in the correct order, which are a total of 1040 blind cards. The correct order is Ace, two, three, four, up to the ten of hearts for each blind man. And give each blind man one deck of cards after you're done shuffling them. Then let each blind man to lay out the blind cards in the correct order. What is the chance that one blind man lay out the ten cards in the correct order? It's quite unlikely, but yet, it's not impossible. Okay, what if there were two or three blind men? Still not impossible. What if there were fifteen or twenty blind men? Mm. That's impossible! But let's say that a miracle had occurred and those 20 blind men laid out the blind cards in the correct order. The issue is that those 20 blind men won't be able to know if they laid out the blind cards in the correct order or not. They have no goal or a purpose behind laying out the blind cards. I mean, nothing will stop them if they approach to the correct order because they don't know if they are doing it right. They'll continue. And the same idea.